Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's doing okay. Good to see everybody over in the Twitch, YouTube, Facebook chats and all that. So yesterday I gave a keynote at the Group Buy conference. Group Buy is a totally free online conference where anybody can choose to talk about anything that they want. Good morning, peep. Oh, I'm surprised it doesn't show my uh, Twitch overlays. Let me make sure I got my Twitch overlays uh, showing on here so that uh, when folks like peep say uh, they're high, oh, let me move them around too. Let me move, uh, do, do, do. hold on a second here. Let's, uh, man, why am I amateur hour today? Well, it's, and also you can tell that I'm amateur hour because I have uh, things like a quarantine haircut hat on because uh, I'm now like 60 days into here and I have, uh, absolutely terrible haircut at this point. God bless her. Erica did a haircut for me. Good morning, Pinal. Good to see you. Uh, Erica did a, a haircut on, did a heck of a job, did a really good job. I was very happy with her uh, her haircut efforts there. But uh, yeah, it's uh, needless to say, I'm not going to win any like modeling jobs anytime soon. So yesterday I gave a keynote at the Group Buy conference where I talked about community and I wanted to go ahead and get it out to my social media channels too as well, just because it's so relevant in this day and age. So why me? Well, I am Brent Ozar and I normally talk about technical stuff like dynamic SQL uh, pro tips, but here I'm going to be talking about something a little different. As a data person, it feels like I'm in the center of everything. It feels like I'm the one who interfaces with developers, sysadmins, executives. And this is one of the things that really attracted me to the database community in, or the database job really in the first place. I like being in the middle of everything and knowing what's going on everywhere in the company at all times. I want to know when there's a new deployment coming. I want to know when we have data science initiatives. Database people always get invited to every meeting, which is a blessing and a curse. Yeah, but we're constantly constantly in touch with all kinds of different groups because everybody needs things from us. Project managers will come in and say things like, hey, we want to try a totally different alternative way of storing data. We want to start using Redis. We want to use uh, uh, the latest Azure Cosmos SQL DB, whatever it is that they want to play around with in order to maybe it's sometimes they're saving money, sometimes they're storing different things inside the database, you name it. Sometimes salespeople will be the first ones to give us the heads up. They'll say, hey, just so you know, there's a, a huge initiative to run an ad and, you know, football games, and we want to make sure that we have enough server capacity in order to handle it. And then sometimes we get pulled into very private, secretive meetings with executives who want to say things like, hey, we're, we're getting ready to acquire a whole bunch of other companies. We want to make sure that we can take care of all the server, server capacity that they're asking for here. Sometimes those changes are less happy. Accounting often comes to us because we're burning too many resources. We're using too much money. Our stuff costs too much. Executives come to us because they go, well, we know that you want to use the latest and greatest version of SQL Server, but we really can't afford that right now. You're going to have to make do with this Antiques Roadshow version for a lot longer. Or sysadmins won't even ask for change permissions. Sometimes we just get change permission permissions jammed right down our throats. We just get this jammed right down our throats of, hey, we're going to move everything to virtualization, or hey, we're going to move everything to the cloud, or hey, we're going to move everything to containers, or hey, we're going to move everything to shared storage. And we don't really have a choice. We're just jammed in the middle and we have to do whatever it is that we that they say. We're the ones who see really large changes coming far in advance. We see when people's performance problems come go to hell in a handbasket. We're the ones who find out when they want to do big, dramatic changes, putting in NoSQL. You hear all these complaining database people who are like, oh, everybody's trying to do everything that I don't want them to do. And we don't really have a choice in a lot of this. We get some of these things just shoved at us at insanely fast speeds. Even in a good year, even in a good year, the rate of change with all this stuff is just staggering. And you're expected to know all of it as a data professional. It, it's, it frustrates me to no end when I see on Twitter, I'll see some evangelist or product blogger or whatever saying, you should drop everything and learn X. You're going to be a dinosaur if you don't learn X. And it's just not fair because it's not possible. Even in a good year, you can't be an expert at everything. You can't be a jack of all trades and be good at it. 
oh, you can suck at a whole lot of things, but if you want to be good, that's something else entirely. You're welcome, Jedi Mind Gorilla. Good to see you in here on the stream again, too. This year, it's even different. This year, the number of changes is just ugly and awkward. We have big, giant companies who are conquering all their competitors, and we just have to figure out how to live with it. We have startups that are exploding, and by exploding, sometimes I mean that in a good way, sometimes I mean that in a crappy way. For example, sometimes they're just taking off, sometimes startups are taking off like a rocket, and we've hitched ourselves to that, and our career is taking off. They're hiring people underneath us as fast as they can, but sometimes startups are exploding in a different way or kind of imploding where they're all of a sudden going to hell in a handbasket. They're going on a downward trajectory instead of an upward one, and our career is the one who's hitched to that, so we're going down in flames as well. You read managing type uh, websites and books, you hear about things like the sharing economy or the gig economy, which have the potential to revolutionize the way that we do so much in business. And then, of course, this year, there's the virus and the virus economy for, for whatever that's worth. And people are getting all nervous and angry about all of the above. And because we're in the center of this, because everything that everyone wants to do revolves around data, we're the ones who have to deal with it. Especially in an economy like this, people are like, we need you to do this to prepare for that. We need you to do that. The virus is coming. You've got to change the way the servers are configured. The virus, all our business is destroyed. We're doing huge layoffs, and you've got to figure out how to manage 6,000 servers by yourself with a stick of chewing gum and it feels like we're under attack from all angles and it often feels like we don't have any input into the decisions that are being made it feels like all this pressure is just coming in from outside and we're like a pressure cooker constantly getting hit from every single angle as a result of that it can feel like you're alone even in a good year a lot of people don't understand what we do as data people they don't really get what we do. I've always been the only database administrator in a company or else of a very small group of database administrators. And the sysadmins didn't understand and the network people didn't understand and the developers didn't understand and the executives didn't understand and the accounting people didn't understand. And it really felt like we were alone and isolated. It's even that way when we look at online communities. I bet you've been to a lot of online events. You've been to, on, especially now, because in-person conferences are just not happening anytime soon. User groups are shut off. SQL Saturdays are shut off. Everything's going virtual. And in a physical event, when you're in person, it's really easy to see all the lurkers. You can look around the room and you can see everyone else who's lurking in the community with you. But online, not so much. In online events, when you read blogs, when you read websites, when you attend online sessions, sometimes depending on how that, uh, the event is structured, it can feel like a ghost town. It can feel like that John Travolta gif where he just walks in, looks around, look, and it feels like it's empty because you don't see everyone who lurks. Now, you do in here when y'all are working on things like live stream where I put a ton of effort into you seeing every message that comes in on the screen, then it's much easier for you to see who's lurking. But the 1% rule says that like 99% of you are lurking, that it feels like you're all alone and it's just you and the presenter. But the community is so much larger than that. The community is huge. To show you what I mean, I want everyone who's watching to type over in the chat or the comments, I want you to type, I'm here and where you are, where you are in the world, and I'll go do it too. So I'll go type in, I'm, whoops, I'm here in San Diego, California. So I'm here where you are in that part of the world. That's good, Jedi Mind Gorilla. I like that. So here, now y'all start seeing the sheer amount of replies that roll through here. I didn't schedule this webcast. This is something I did at the last minute, just to spur of the moment. Hey, let's go see what happens. And look at the number of people who are lurking inside here. People who just hang out and watch streams and watch other people inside the data community. 
I was utterly stunned the first time that I went to a big global conference. First time, like more than a decade ago, I went to a big global conference and there were thousands of people there. And I remember just walking in and going, oh my God, it turns out that the database community is huge. There are so many of y'all all from all over the world who do the same thing that I do. So as I'm looking through these names, Tony are from Alaska. Alaska is one of my favorite places on earth. Alexandre from Brazil. Uh, 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 Praman, Pamanda, I'm never going to butcher your name, uh, Pamandaba. Uh, but you're here in Mumbai, St. John, uh, New Brunswick in Canada, the Netherlands. People from all over the world just typing things in. This is so fulfilling as a database community member. Yeah, depending on the community, you'll see around 1% of the people speak, but I don't want you to think that 1% of the people is somehow better off than you are. Lurking is great. Do not feel bad about lurking. Lurking is totally fantastic. For example, I'm a huge car fan. I love cars. I am all about cars. I usually keep car models on my desk. I have car wallpaper on my computer. I read car websites. I watch car YouTube videos. I watch Doug DeMuro, you know, Tavarish, all kinds of people, VinWiki. I love car culture. And if you ask me to define my own career or myself, define who I am, I would define myself more about my love of cars than I would my love of databases. I'm a lurker in car communities. There's nothing you could do to get me to, pre well, maybe a million dollars, but there's nothing that you could do to get me to present in car communities because I just don't do that. I, I'm not going to give back in those communities. That's not who I am. And for a lot of you here, you're going to lurk in a data community for forever, and there's nothing that I can do to get you to change that. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with lurking at all, nothing whatsoever. The thing I want you to get is that you're not alone and that there are a huge percentage of people. You're welcome. I'm glad you like it. There are a huge percentage of people who are right there with you and you're all there to help each other. So just as even though you may not feel like getting up on a stage and becoming part of that 1% who wants to get up, present, write blog posts, whatever, I bet you would help if someone asked you for their help. If someone said, hey, I've got this problem with insert blank technology here that you know, if they were sitting right next to you, you'd be like, well, okay, sure, I, I guess I would help out. Yeah, sure. So when you feel like you need help, there is nothing wrong with reaching out and asking for that. I believe that's, I don't know if that's Pam Shaw or not. I saw Mr. P. Mr. P. Shaw, and I, I know a Pam Shaw who's a friend of mine. There's nothing wrong with reaching out and asking for help. This is what the whole entire data community, oh, thank you, Jedi Mind Gorilla. I appreciate it. That's very cool. There is nothing wrong with reaching out and asking for help, especially, oh, Mike Shaw, no relation, especially in times like this when all of us are absolutely scared at the amount of changes that are happening inside of here. Because at the end of the day, the data person's thing inside here, inside that uh, database diagram, it's not just one person. There are tens of thousands of us who are all in this same boat, even though it feels like we're all being pressed in very tightly from the outside. There's so many other people inside this with you. The community is more massive than I could begin to describe. And during times like this, when you're stuck alone at home and it feels like no one else has the same problems that you do, there are a lot of us who do. Odds are anything that you're facing, there's someone else out there who can help. <laughs> Tony says he can help with questions on ultra running. You know, it's funny that you say that. I would normally take you up on that, but I'm not allowed out of the house. I mean, like the a marathon is the furthest I've ever gone, and I don't really feel like I'm ever going to go do that again. It's really hard on your body. But regardless of whatever you're... Dang, thanks for the subscription. Regardless of any problems that you're running into, reach out in the community and ask for help, whether it's SQL help, whether it's emailing a blogger. And one of us will reach out and put you into, the, into touch with someone else who shares the same problems that you do and who can get you the solutions. 
No matter how alone you feel, there is other help out there. And I know just as you would help someone who off who uh, came to you looking for help, there are lots of us out there who are more than willing to give you the time that you need to help with whatever problems that you're facing. So on a good day, you feel alone. This year, you feel really alone. We're all here to help. All right, so that's everything that I wanted to talk through today. I just wanted to give you that quick message there, and that's it. I'm going to go back to doing my day job. Hopefully that makes your day suck just a little bit less, and I will see you all on my next stream. Saturday, I am doing uh, How to Think Like the Engine Live with 100% demos. So I will see you all Saturday morning. Adios, everybody.